What's up, Bulldogs? All right, I've, I'm really excited. I'm actually in Vancouver with, uh, with a friend of mine, Dan Locke here, and he's been so gracious to invite me out here. He's someone who I consider a mentor to me. I came out here to actually help to grow my business and to learn from Dan and to actually introduce you guys to Dan. Dan was very gracious in, in offering to be on the channel and he's got a lot of information to share. You guys probably already seen the book review I did on FU Money, which which was awesome, just you know, great <laughs> book. And that's how I got introduced to Dan. And you know, I'm watching his videos, I'm reading his book, and I'm like, this is like we have a similar mindset. Like yes. I, I, there's not a lot of people that that understand these things. So you know, if you like a lot of the content that I talk about, especially around building wealth, right? Uh, the bulldog mindset, all of these concepts, I think Dan really embodies them. So I really am super excited to uh, to have an opportunity for, to introduce you guys to Dan and to meet him in person here. So, uh, so I look forward to sharing my, my story and adding value to your audience as well. Because I know the mindset that you teach, I mean, that bulldog mindset, it's very similar to what I teach, right? There's a yeah. lot in common, right? In business and fitness and different things that we do. So look forward. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. So guys, uh, you know, real quick here, wh why don't we find out? I'm, I'm just curious. Have you guys heard of Dan already? Right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's do a poll. That'll be a kind of an interesting poll. Mm -hmm. So we'll put the poll up here and and vote. Let me know. Yes, no. Have you have you heard of Dan? Have you been familiar with him? Because he's just grown his YouTube channel to a million subscribers now. So and uh, you know, I feel like he's got a really good reach here. So I'll be just curious to see if this is the first time you're hearing <laughs> from Dan or, or or not. What what is your story? Like you know, I know that. You you retired. You you know you reached mm. uh, you know became a millionaire essentially at, at 27. Correct. But I want to know what happened before then because I think a lot of people they say you know sometimes a lot of the successful people they tell the story from from success on and that's they not, see where you yeah. are they don't see where you came from exactly right, right? Yeah. so where so, is the beginning so I was born in Hong Kong okay uh, so I immigrated to Canada when I was 14 years old uh, with my mom. And because at the time when I was in Hong Kong, I was getting into a lot of trouble, right? Yeah. I, was, I was just like a punk kid. I was getting into fights and I was hanging around with like gangster people and wrong people and it's just bad, right? And then one day, uh, actually my uh, dad had to bail me out, out of the police station. Okay. Um, and the police officer, we had the balcony and he was saying, saying to my dad, hey, you know what, if your son continues like this, he, he's gonna end up in like in jail or something, just bad, right? You gotta get him out of this environment, it's too toxic. So very shortly after that, my dad said, okay, we gotta get out of here. So he picked Vancouver and we immigrated here. And shortly after that, unfortunately, my mom and dad got, uh, uh, my, my dad and my mom got divorced when I was 16 years old Okay. Uh, because of relationship. So as the only child in my family, uh, I had to man up. Right. I had to stop being like a, a punk kid and boy. I had to take care of my family. I had to take care of my mom because I love my mom. She sacrificed so much for me being right. here, right? So at the time I was living in a one bedroom apartment with just my mom in Surrey, which is kind of the, the hood in Vancouver, right? Okay. It's not, not so not so good part in Vancouver. And just living there. And so at the time I knew that I wasn't doing that, that well in school. Right. So. I, and I know I couldn't provide for my mom just with uh, like a dead end job. I, I needed more. So I started my first business when I was in high school just with a couple of buddies, like mowing lawns for people in our okay. neighborhood, right? Just landscaping and all that. And I did different odd things to, to make money and I tried uh, like vending machines and, and I, I know, did vending machines. You didn't even say, go, yeah. man. I read, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, shit. And I said, what else is an asset besides real estate, right? right? And right. I was like, I can't make music. Yes. I can't sell digital rights. So I'm like, vending machines. Vending so machines. I bought gumball machines. Yeah, gumball yeah. machine. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, so the vending machine. Did he work with I didn't work with that one well for me because I couldn't. It gave me the mindset to realize that this was possible. When I ha when I actually went and collected the money from the machines, I was like, okay. I'm actually making some money. money. Yes. I don't think I want to continue doing this, but right. there are other ways to make money. It that's opened right. my mind. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then I try fixing computers for people. Okay. Um, I try like delivering stuff. Like it's 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 a, it's, it's crazy because I was jumping from one thing to another. Like uh -huh. trying, but I was very driven because I wanted to 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 make money to to be successful, right? And, and, it's, and it's pretty obvious here, I, I think, you know, just to, to clarify, mm -hmm. 
So you didn't come, you didn't have a big background of money. I mean, if no. you're doing these things, right? Because sometimes a lot of people, they like to justify, they like to say, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, people do it all the time with Donald Trump. They're like, oh, well, he has a lot of money, right? Or his dad had a lot no. of money. So and my dad actually, so, so uh, my mom and dad got divorced when I was 16. Mm -hmm. My dad actually went bankrupt. Oh, wow, okay. When, when I was 17 years old. Okay. So part of it, because my dad actually uh, had a business partner uh -huh. and he was so trusting and he basically guarantees everything. Mm -hmm. So one day his business partner disappeared. So, and that left my dad about a million dollars in debt in US dollars. Oh wow, A million okay. dollars. Yeah. And that destroyed him. Yeah. I, I'm talking about his confidence, his everything. Like he's, after that he's not the same person anymore. Sure, yeah. Like it just destroyed, he, and he never bounced back, unfortunately. Mm. So because of that, I still remember clearly that conversation that one day changed my life. One day uh, off school, after school, I went home and I s was hearing some, a, a conversation. My mom was talking with someone on the phone mm. and she closed the door and I could hear she was crying behind the door and I knocked on the door. Mom, is everything okay? Is everything okay? And she's like, don't worry, I'm just talking with the dad. And then afterwards, she opened the door and I could, I could clear it. Like she just cried, like bawling her eyes out. I said, Mom, what's going on? What's happening? And she was like, Well, you know, your dad just said that he can no longer send us money anymore. Oh, wow. At first, he was sending us some allowance, right? Sure, right. And my yeah. mom is a housewife. She's never worked a day in her life. Oh, wow, yeah. Never worked yeah. a day in her life. And my mom was, it's the first time as a son yeah. that I saw that helplessness. Sure. That hopeless look of on my mom. Right. I've yeah. never seen that because my mom is always happy and like super kind. I've never seen that look on her. Yeah. Like that look and it was like she's terrified. She's helpless. It's not a face I want to see again. Yeah. From then, that changed my life. From then on, I made a commitment to myself that I never ever want to see that look on her face again. Right. So yeah. that's when I got into business. I don't care what it takes. I just, I want to take care of my mom. So that's what motivates me to do all these things. Sure. It, yeah. it was that one day. It's, I, I talk about it, it's like it just happens yesterday. Right. I, can, I remember clearly the room, her look, everything. Yeah. That was it. That was a turning point. Uh, so out of all these things, because of that, no, I didn't came for money. In fact, negative. Sure. Because, yeah. You know, my dad and all that stuff. Um, later on, actually, uh, after I... I've accomplished some success. I helped him pay off some of those, you know, people who he, who he owed money to as well, right? Right. Um, but no, but thinking back as a teenager, I was actually at first very angry towards my dad. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I had a lot of resentment towards, right. like, it's the first few years I didn't even talk to him sure. after the incident. It's like, how. How dare you do this to us? How come you don't take care of mom? How come you put us through this? And, and, and it was just teenager, right? Right. Uh, but later on, uh, after my dad and I, we talked and, and we worked things out. Looking back, John, that was actually the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Because there would be no Dan Lock if right. it wasn't for that. You incident. had to grow up real quick, right? Very because you quick. see this, you're helpless as a, as a kid. To help your mom, mm -hmm. you have to figure out a way to do this. Yes. You have to be a man now. And I had to be self-reliant. Yeah. That it's, it's that big lesson I almost learned, like even your dad, you cannot rely on. Right, exactly, yeah. Even someone like your parent, you, the only person you can rely on is yourself. Yeah. And I, and I just, you know what, whatever it takes. And I just, I need to be successful because then in my mind, I almost associate if you're not successful, it means the people you love gets hurt. Right, yeah. The people you love gets hurt. So I need to be successful to, to protect them, exactly. if that makes sense. I, may, I make that kind of association. It's, I don't think it's super healthy back then, but now looking back, right, that's what it gives me the initial drive right. to do what I do, right? Well, and a lot of people, you know, I've found that a lot of people have to have these kind of what I call lower motives first. Like some people get started because of revenge or, yes. or to prove Somebody everyone wrong. else wrong. And, and they feel guilty about that, but like you, you have to get past that, those insecurities, yes. before you can have the higher yes. motives, the things yes. like helping other people and yes. saving the children, all these kind of things. You I can't agree. just, your heart doesn't feel that because you are at the time, suffering. Right? You're still at the yeah. survival mode, right? Exactly, exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. So, so from there, I started my business and I was 
trying different business ideas, but none of them worked. Right. right. None of them worked. Yes. Yeah. Nowadays, people see what I do. Oh, Dan, everything you touch turns into gold, <laughs> right? Well, you should have met me back then. Everything yeah. I touch turns into shit. <laughs> so give me, give me some of the, you know, the things that I was like, you know, here. trying to make money with the stock market and uh -huh. stupid shit and yeah. speculate and and like it's hilarious. Yeah. I would uh, buy the stock uh -huh. like here, and then it's, everything is doing well. I would the minute I buy, it would go down. <laughs> Like, right? Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? It's like a 50-50 chance, but you're yeah, always on the wrong side. Everything exactly. I touch is just like, what the hell? So, yeah. you know, my friend, if they just bet against me, he would do very well. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's like at a casino, you know? Mm. You know, the guy's like having bad luck. You just do everything the opposite, right? Exactly, yeah. I was that guy. So everything I touch, it just, it didn't work for me. And I was about, uh, in about 20 years old, I was 150K in debt. Oh, wow. So wow. I lost all my, like, because my mom had the, um, uh, the, 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 the divorce, a little bit of money, right? right? So lost all that money. We borrowed, you know, maybe tens of few, 10, 10 K, something like that. Uh, my uh, relatives, I borrowed money from them okay. just to start all these crazy businesses because they want to support us. Lost all their money. Oh, wow. I lost my uncle, everybody's money. So it was, we were 150 credit card, all that, all maxed out. 150 K in debt. Wow, okay. That was the first time was we were near bankruptcy. Yeah. Near, near the bankruptcy. Now, some people might think that they look at me today, oh, you know, you didn't give up. So I started and failed at 13 businesses. Wow, okay, like yeah. 13 businesses, right? Right. And they look, oh, you're so driven, you're so persistent. I'm like, it's not like that at all. Right. I was just desperate. You had to do it. Right? <laughs> I had to yeah. do it. It's exactly. like, I fell 13 times, I'm 150K in debt. Right. If I just get a job, it would take me like 30 years to pay this shit off. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? It's yeah. like you're back against the wall. You kind of don't have a choice. Like it's the, like get rich or die trying type scenario. Right. right, yeah. So it's not that I'm super like positive and motivated. It's not like <laughs> that. It's like, hey man, shit, you got to make this work. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and at the time I was so very lost. Because I had no direction, I think it's in some way I didn't have that father figure in my life. Sure. No yeah. one, no one was telling me what what I, what I should focus on. I found my first mentor. Okay. His name is Alan, and Alan became kind of that father figure for me. Right. Now that may not be the answer for everybody, but that was the answer for me. I found someone who believed in me more than I believed in myself. Right. Yeah. So he taught me how actually marketing and business works. He gave me the skill of copywriting. Okay, perfect. So yeah. I was working for him as a copywriter. He taught me how to write copy. Uh, in case you don't know what copywriting is, it's using words, right? right to, exactly. to, to compel people to, to make a purchase. I call that persuasion in print. Yeah, right. That's could be email, could be website. At the time, we were doing like direct mail. Yeah. Direct mail. So he gave me that skill. When he gave me that skill, that changed my life. So I basically worked for Alan for one year. Okay. Well, kind of not volunteer, but next to nothing. It didn't pay me that much. But that year, I always refer that year as the million dollar year of my life. Right. Because I got a million dollars worth of education. Right. And it taught me how business works and I'm always forever grateful. And from there, afterwards, I started my own one man advertising agency. Okay. Just yep. by myself. And I was making $10,000 a month as a young guy. Oh wow. I've yeah. never seen Big so much change. money. Yeah. yeah. I've never Once seen Once you so have that, that high income skill. Yes. That was that was the key, right? Because I was yeah. starting all these businesses with no skills. Right. It was just an idea, hey, I could do this, make money, I could do that, make money, but I didn't have skill sets. I was stupid. Right. Right. Making I don't I have no business acumen. I didn't know how marketing works or how to get customers, anything like that. I didn't know any of that stuff. So from there, their high income skill, that ten thousand a month, it was life changing. Yeah. Right, it you know, may may not be a lot of money for some people, but that back then for me it was like, I felt like a million dollars. Right, I was able to uh, support my mom, pay the bills, uh, you know, put, pay some off, pay some debt off. Uh, it was awesome. Like I felt it was so so good. And from there, uh, as a copywriter, then I my client. So I imagine you're my client back then. I'm writing copy for you. Okay, and they started coming to me and say, hey. You know, Dan, you wrote me this beautiful sales letter. How the hell am I going to use this thing? Oh, I see, yeah. Right? Yeah. And I said, well, just do this and do this. You mail this and you find this list and all that, right? And they're like, well, I don't get it. Can, can you help me with this? Sure. Then transition into consulting. Okay, right. So consulting yeah. becomes, so my first high income skill is 
copywriting. Sure. Then a the second high income skills is consulting. So then, it's, oh, can you help me? So I started charging them for that. That that added an other six figure income to what I do. So okay. now I'm like making a quarter million dollars, two hundred to three hundred k a year, with working from home, working with clients. This is amazing. Right. Yeah. Thinking about a couple of years back then, I was trying to make like two thousand dollars a month, right? Right. Exactly. Like that's yeah. a that's a big jump. From there, you love this story. Okay. So then, internet start started being becoming popular. Okay. So this was pre-internet. This pre-internet. Was this direct like, mail. This was this actually dir- mailing the stuff this out to the list. stamps and like, yeah, okay, yeah, that, okay, this is not. Okay. Yeah, this is not. And then internet. And I okay. was because I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, right? Right. Okay. So then uh, I was buying Bruce Lee collectibles from Hong Kong. Because, okay. Right. And I was flipping them on eBay. Oh nice. <laughs> right. I was making yeah. good money doing this. I was selling like at the time like VCD. I don't even know. Like before DVD. Oh, okay. VCD. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not Netflix, not Blu-ray, DVD, pre-DVD, VCD. Right. Like okay. a lower quality of, of DVD. Sure, yeah. Exactly. I, was selling, I was selling VHS tapes. Wow. It's on eBay, right? Yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> but I was selling that on eBay. And I was buying different things and I was making good money on, on, on e- internet. And, I was, uh, and then I wrote a little, my first little um, book. Okay. On wow. marketing. Yeah. Because I want to take what I've learned uh, from like cooperating marketing and put together a little book called Psychological Tactics. Okay. Okay. And funny enough, I wrote that book. Actually, it's to educate consumers what marketers do to, to sell things. Oh, interesting. Okay. No consumer buys the book. Who, guess who ends up buying all the, for the book? All the marketers. All the damn marketers <laughs> buying the book. Right? Just like Influence. Just like Robert Caldini. I right? know. Exactly. Like yeah, the damn marketers thing. buying the book, right? Yeah, okay. And, yeah. and from there, we, we sold the book. Within a short period of time, it was, at, at the time, it's like a paper, like spiral bound. I did, uh-huh. it, I did it at like a local print shop and we, we shipped these things to them. It's so fun. fun, fun so so you were, funny. But you were selling it on the internet or were you send, no, sending was, out no, form letters? I was letters selling still? it on, on uh, like forums and bulletin boards. Oh, okay, boards. yeah. Bulletin and you, boards. And then you mail it. And yeah. I mail it to them, right? Okay, yeah. And no, by the time they send me a check or money order. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is no PayPal, <laughs> yeah. no merchant account. I exactly. get it. They send me something, I send them something back. It's hilarious. Yeah. And then I uh, learned from, I bought a course. From Corey Rudo, the late Corey Rudo. Okay. The very first internet marketing course called um, This Insider Secrets to Marketing on the Internet. Okay. It's two big binders, like 300 page each, something like that. Right. Crazy. Like, that's the very first ever internet marketing course in, in, like, in, uh, in history, right? So I learned, was learning from Corey, reading, and one of the chapters was talking about you should sell, turn your physical product into digital product. Oh, okay, yeah. So I yeah. converted my book into an ebook. Sure. Now yeah. back then it's not PDF, it's called EXE file. <laughs> yeah. It was EXE file. Yeah. You need another software to open the thing, to read the thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And I was selling the EXE file from there. That's my first kind of um, product. And from there I developed like all these other, other products. And I was making so much money online. Yeah. Because there was no competition. Oh, sure, yeah. There, there's yeah, like back then. N- no, nothing, right? I was running ads on um, Overture. Oh, okay. O- Overture. That's that was like the old pa- search engine or? Pay-per-click, right? the first pay-per-click search engine. Oh, okay, okay, okay. yeah. Okay. And then uh, we were uh, doing search engine, uh, search engine optimization on Yahoo. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yahoo. Yeah. Not Google. Back then, Yahoo was big. Big shit. They had a chance. They had a they chance. It. it was Yahoo, right? And then yeah. there's a couple other search engines. I forgot. Like Microsoft has a search engine back then too. It was pretty popular. Oh yeah, yeah. It was before the ping. I forgot whatever that that is. But I remember using like Dogpile or whatever it was. So I was like, mm-hmm. Can we yeah, all? right. Yeah. So from like it's all like yeah. all the stuff. So but it was no, there was no competition. Yeah, we, we could we could we could get customers like cheap for next to no money. Yeah, really, right? And I made so much money. I remember. I've never seen so much money come into my life. Keep in mind, like, again, a few years ago, no money, to now, you know, f- because of that, I was thinking, well, you know what, now I'm like this big shot, and mm. it's a lot of the insecurities. Sure, right? yeah. Because back then, when I was uh, in school, in high school, even in here, I was one of the only uh, three Chinese in my school. Okay. I post this on YouTube. I got bullied. I got beat up. I got bullied almost every single every single week. Yeah, like yeah. some kids and they beat me up and stuff like that. So and I was that 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 invisible kid, right? 
right? I was the guy who was in the very back of the classroom, never put up my hand, never talked to anybody because no one would talk to me. I had no friends. So once I started making some money, that whole, all that insecurity just, just, oh, sure. just, just came out. It's like, now I look at me, I'm successful. You guys are a loser, I'm cool, right? right. Like, like all this shit. And, and because I had no friends, so now I was having all these f- friends around me. Right, you like, need the validation. I need the validation. Yeah, yeah. I, like, you know, I need the, hey man, I'll buy you, I'll buy you a drink, we'll go to dinner and all this. We'll, I, we'll go to dinners and I would like drop like 3K on a night. Oh wow, yeah. And I don't even drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They drink, I don't drink. Exactly, right? yeah. And I would travel, I would pay for everything and all this, all this shit because I want people around me. Right. The truth yeah. is I was lonely. Exactly. Right? It's, yeah. it's just lonely. I need validation. And I was making a lot of money, I was also blowing a lot of money. Right. Because I thought, oh, no problem, internet, man, it's so easy, money coming in so fast, you don't think about this shit, right? Exactly, yeah. Not a good move, by the way. Yeah. Not a good move. But you have to go through. I was getting a new car every year, like, you know, new fast car, new every year, doing all that shit. So by the age of 27, I, that's my first retirement. I know okay. you've gone through that as well, right? Yep. Yeah. The first retirement. And I know John said that's the most depressing thing that ever happened to you, right? I know, exactly. Yeah, people will not, you know, you won't believe it until you go through it. So it's good that you're listening to this. It's true. And, it's oh, very, very true. By the way, I do want to, I would want to make sure, I know a lot of you might not have time to watch the whole video. If you don't, make sure though that you do click in the link in the description, the first link. It's going to be a master class that Dan and myself are going to be putting on. If you're liking the story, if you're liking to hear, you know, how Dan made his money and, and, and all this stuff, you're definitely going to want to check that out. So, uh, so definitely go do that now. And there'll also be a card in the description or in the, in the top as well. So. Mm-hmm. so from there, so 27 years old, I made a million dollars. Okay. And I yeah. mean, not like revenue. I mean, a million bucks in cash. Right. Yeah. In the bank. Right. Retire. I thought, you know, this is cool. Yeah. Right here, English Bay, I was sitting on the beach for one month. Yeah. I thought this this is the beach lifestyle, cool, right? Having like getting suntan and all that stuff. No, I got sunburned. I get suntan. I got sunburned. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was like all red and my my skin, the skin falling off. It's not a good thing. It's a dumb thing to do. Uh, one month of that bought out of my mind. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Bought out of my mind, and then. From there, I thought, you know what? One month of this, maybe I should do something else. So the second month, what I did is actually went to, you know, rent a bunch of movies. Yeah. Right. Yep. One bunch of movies. I was watching five, six movies a day. I was watching so much movies, my back was hurting because I was sitting so much. Right. Yeah. You just watch movies and you just all that. Right. After one month of that, I'm like, this is, this is dumb. This is this is dumb. I need to do something else. So then I went to talk to my mentor, which is my second mentor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my second mentor's name is Dan Pena. Oh, okay, yeah. You can yeah. see him on the... the billion Dollar Man. Yeah, 50 yeah. Billion Dollar Man. Yeah. Uh, and he was laughing. Mm. Uh, he said, you know, I said, so Dan, what should I do? He said, you should start a business. Uh-huh. I said, no way in hell, I'm not starting a business. You don't understand. I kill myself. Right. <laughs> I first... just tried to escape my business. Yeah, yeah. like I kill myself all these yeah. years because the first five years in my business career, I didn't take a single day off. Yeah. Yeah. First five years, I'm sure you can relate, John, right? For sure, yeah. You're like long you hours. Grind. It's a grind. You just grind, yeah. right? You just grind every single day. There's no weekend. Yeah. There's no, none of that shit. You, you're working all the time. Exactly. Even though when you're off, you're not off. Yeah. You're still working. You're thinking about business, how you can improve. It was that period of time. So once you get to a certain point, I'm like, I fuck this shit. I don't, I don't want to do this exactly. anymore, right? Yeah. But he said, now you can start your business from a different place. Right. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? See that now you don't have to just do it to, to make a living. You made some money. Right. He said, in fact, the exact word he said is, you made a few pennies. <laughs> you made a few pennies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You made a few bucks. Now you can relax just a little bit. But then what's next? You can start from a place where you're coming from more abundance. Sure. Exactly. You can build a business that, that you enjoy, that you like, that's scalable, that, that would require years of your time right something you can focus on something you can build not just to make a few dollars and to retire but something you could really like dedicate your life to right and i did that um then i started on you know all these new businesses and that i get meaning back to what i do right now I, i'm getting okay now i love yeah. what i do i'm enjoying what i do um all these and that that changed my life because it's very interesting how money works when you don't focus on money Mm-hmm. Money comes to you faster. 
true. I Very know it's true. hard to believe if you're watching this, if you're yeah. just getting started, it's like, oh, come on, John and Dan, what are you talking about, man? I'm gonna make some money next month. I get it, but when you actually get how money works, yeah. when you're not desperate, when you're not needy, and needy is creepy, when you're not needy, <laughs> exactly. when you're not needy, uh, then money comes to you. It's like exactly. dating. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's same. exactly oh, like yeah, dating. I, when yeah. you're like, oh man, I gotta meet a girlfriend, I got all this shit. And it's yeah. like, no girl wants to talk to you. No. But when you're like confident, you're not attached, yeah. you're just having a good conversation, easy to get yeah, a date. Yeah, because you got abundance. You got abundance. Yeah. And, and it's kind of interesting too, uh, you know, when I when I heard you telling that mm. story, a lot of a lot of people have been following me for a while. They're, mm. they're, they saw my face because it's the exact same story, right? So it, I think it's probably, it's interesting to hear the same story because I did the same thing, right? I finally, I worked so hard to retire. To get to this right? point, right? Yeah, yes. and then I finally got there and yes. I, I actually lived on the beach in yes. Maui for, for two months. I've got videos from my channel when yes. I was doing that. Yes. And I was miserable. I was so miserable. I, I, I can't, you can't even understand the amount of depression that you, that you experience Very true. When, when you have Very a true. goal in life and you achieve that goal because it, that's, that's the, the thinking of it's about the, the thing the I'm thing. getting yeah. as opposed to the, the process of who you become. That's and, right. and that was the shift. And I didn't understand that. And uh, you know, I did the same thing. I, I was on the beach. My, my dream was like, oh, I just want to play video games all day. All day I didn't yes. watch the movies, yes. right? I played video same, games. Same idea. And I, I couldn't stand it. I was like, I was waiting all this time so I could just play all the video games I want to all day and just relax and not have to do anything. And I hated it. Yes. I hated it. Yes. I had to it's, go back to work. I think because as human being, we have a need to grow. Yes. You think about, look at nature, right? Look at, look, look at, uh, a, a tree mm -hmm. is either growing or is dying. Exactly. Human yeah. beings, I think, the same. If we don't say the same, you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. So we have that need to grow, especially as an entrepreneur, yeah. right? As as a go getter, right? You, you as a type A, you want you want to make stuff happen, right? Exactly. You want to be doing things. You want to be. You want to be. You want to let the world to know that your value, your worth, exercise your creativity, your intelligence, your everything that you have. Right. That's what makes it interesting. So 27, so became, I became a millionaire by the age of 27, a multi-millionaire by the age of 30, and then something happened to me again. So there was a few turning points you can see okay. right the retirement. Right, yeah. So I'm building all my companies, making more money than ever. Happier. Yeah. Then I got purpose. And one day I woke up in the morning. Tea was coming down. I'm like, what the hell? I guess I, I rarely cry. Yeah. Rarely cry. What is going on? And my wife now, by the time, by the time Jenny, like with me, mm. Jenny's like, what's, what's going on? I'm like, I never see you cry. What's going on? I said, I don't know. Hmm. I said, I really don't know. I just have this sense of like depression comes out of nowhere. Okay, okay. I don't know if it's like that, that 30 years old, I don't, I don't know the midnight cri uh, midlife crisis, I don't know whatever the hell it is. Right, Something yeah. is it's going on. Like I felt suddenly this depression out sure. of nowhere. And she was like, she was a little worried about me. Like what, what is going on, right? And Jenny was comforting me. And I said something, something is missing. Okay, okay. Because I now I have all these businesses and it's cool. But I don't know, it feels like I'm 30 years old, 40, what, what am I going to do in the next 10 years? And I have all these thoughts. Right. And ask myself, what do I really want to do? And, and when am I the happiest? Right, okay, yeah. I kind of started Good asking question. a different yeah, question. For sure. And I went on this kind of spiritual journey. Okay. Because business I get. Like right. I have spent my whole life up to this point, like figuring how business works and how, how to make money, all that stuff, right? how to create wealth. But then the rest of my life, what, how I want to figure out level life, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I, was, I went into this heavy, heavy, deep dive into different types of work, such as like, you know, even religions or, or spiritual work and books and all that stuff. I'm trying to find myself, right? Sure, right, yeah. And so I was, deep diving into a lot of these different works and spiritual books and, and even religions and all that, I was trying to find what, what's the purpose? I don't know, somehow I felt like, okay, I need, to, I need to have a stronger purpose. Yeah. 
And I remember when I had no money, but at the time, you know how I was, I was sharing the story with you, I was getting bullied. Okay, right, yeah. That period of time, I was taking martial art lessons. Oh, okay, yeah. Taking martial art lessons because I want to protect myself, right? And that gave me a lot of confidence. And I remember as I, I, I was teaching martial art lessons, at the time, even though I didn't have anything, really still had no money. Right. But there were moments I was very, very happy when I am teaching. Yeah, okay. Because mm-hmm. I have my, like, um, uh, uh, like the same uh, brothers, you know, we, we're practicing and all right. that stuff. And, and I would be working hard and I would teach them stuff. And I thought, you know what? I was very happy when I'm teaching. Right, yeah. And I thought maybe that is my purpose. And even back, even from when I was in making, uh, uh, already making money online, oh. and I started doing some teaching, where right. I do some speaking here and there, a couple of workshops here and there, but never, never was like doing it full, full time. I was doing it actually on a very top, part time basis because I'm busy running my companies, right? So I thought, you know what, I want to do that. Right, yeah. I, that's, that's my thing. Yeah, right. Your purpose. That's, that's yeah. my purpose. Yeah. So then from then on, I thought to myself, okay, how could I do more teaching? Sure. How, how do I get back to doing this? And that's how I now transition, you can say, from not just an entrepreneur, but now to more a global educator, right? right. With the YouTube channel, with the social media. That's when I thought, you know what, I, I want to do more of that. But I didn't think about like social media. I was just starting teaching even locally. Right, exactly, yeah. Right, you know, with my little club that I have. I just, I like to do that. Right. I like to, that doesn't get bored. No, exactly. It yeah. doesn't get bored. And that, that changes. So that changed the direction of, of my focus and, and where I want to go in life. Yeah. And fast forward to here so far, right? A million subscribers on YouTube and, and all these things. But really, it's those incidents. My mom, right? When my mom and dad uh, got divorced, 27 years old, sitting on the beach, and then the 30 years old. Like th- right. Those are the th- three big events in my life that shape who I am today. Wow, and you know it's it's really interesting that what you said about the purpose too, because I I, I had to go on that search as mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. and I came up with a formula for finding finding purpose, mm-hmm. oh, which it. which is basically this: is I always tell people figure out no matter what station you were in life, whether you're a janitor or the president of the United States, mm-hmm. what would you do, mm-hmm. right? What would no one be able to stop you from doing? And for me, it was a very similar purpose. I realized that if I were a janitor, I'd be figuring out the best fucking way to mop the floor. Mm. And then I'd be teaching all the other janitors how to do it because that's my purpose in life is to mm. take knowledge, consolidate it, package it up and give it to other people. Because that, that's when, you know, nothing could stop me from doing that. It sounds like a similar type mm. of thing. It's like, yes. you know, you see that pattern throughout your life is that yes. you, no one can stop you from teaching. As you're learning this stuff, you have, even the first ebook you said, right? Yes. It's like teaching. And yes. that's, you know, you're giving that, that yes. gift. And, and once you have that purpose, yes. then it, 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 changes, it changes everything. It changes everything. Because yeah. I think um, for what we do, mm. anyone who does what we do, you got to have that teacher's heart. Exactly. Yeah. You cannot do what we do without a teacher's heart. Right. right. You cannot do what we do without seeing people transformed. Exactly. Like you, you, exactly. Want, you want to. That's, we get a thrill out of that. Right. You know, making money is all that, but it's not nice. But when you see a, a comment, right? Yeah. And you see a, a, hear a success story from your student, there's something about that that money cannot buy. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's, it's almost a, to me, as a, that's at least how I feel like, all the hardship that I've gone through, right. it almost makes it more meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If I'm not sharing with anybody, no one can benefit from it. But if I'm sharing my story with people, oh, and they, 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 it impacts them in some way. We, I went through hell, but exactly. at least maybe you don't have to go through hell, right? Yeah. Maybe you have to go through a little bit less hell, right? right? Maybe instead of making that many mistakes, you make this many mistakes. And that gives it meaning. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It gives it meaning. It's, it's a very interesting way of looking at things. So it's, it's, that's my yeah. purpose. Yeah, that's truly really my purpose, and and I tell people, if you ask me if if I'm not thinking about retirement or anything like that. Right. Yeah. I have retired to what I love to do. This is what I love to do. Exactly. Retirement doesn't mean retirement. You think about the concept is to be able to do whatever you want. Right. Really. Exactly. Yeah. Right? If you can travel, you can you can golf, you can fish, you can whatever you want to do. 
I'm already doing what I want to do. Exactly, yeah. So I think the, 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 pro, uh, the best question you can ask yourself, if you don't have to do it for money, what would you do? Right. Like yeah. What career would you pick? What would you be excited doing like every day? Like, exactly. You might think, oh, I want to play video games. I want to, you know, I want to, you know, just like do nothing. Trust me, you, you yeah. don't want to do nothing. It's you would you would you would go crazy doing that. You exactly. Say, yeah. You want to do something. What's that something you want to do? And I say, you know what? This is what I want to do. Exactly. Education, teaching. That's what I want to do. And, and you know, I, the interesting thing about that question is because I think people ask that question a lot of times, and I'm I'm curious about your opinion on this mm-hmm. as well. But I've found that people can't really honestly answer that question until they've made the money. Yes, true. Like you can think about it all you want, and, and people tell me all the time. Like I've, I've done videos on my mm-hmm. on my channel where I've said, I don't want to win the lottery, or I've said, if someone gave me a ten million dollars right now, I wouldn't take it. I don't, and they're like, oh, you're full of shit, John. No, of course you would want a little. No, I want to earn it because to me it's about who I become and, and the the process of of, of making that and, and achieving the thing. I don't want to. It's like you're robbing me if you just give it to me, mm-hmm. and. You know, I, I think that's it's the same thing. It's like you can't understand that until you've actually made the money, yeah. and then you get there, and then you realize, oh, yeah, what they're saying. Like everyone, I think that's watching right now that is an entrepreneur or has made their money, has, yeah. it could quote retire. Yeah. They're nodding their heads like this. They're like, these guys are right, and everyone else is saying, oh, these guys are full of shit. They're yeah, they're no, trying no, to sell yeah. me something. They're full of shit. They're, 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 yeah. they're, they say they're full of shit. Oh yeah, easy for you to say, right? Mm-hmm. They, they have all it, but once you do get there, you'll know that that's. Life is not about that. It's about yeah. something else, right? Uh, and you shift from, I mean, I believe in life we go through like so four stages. Mm-hmm. This is something I talk about. First stage is what I call survival. Yes. Right? You go through like you're just surviving, you're, you're trying to pay the bills, you're like struggling, right? And then you go from survival to security. Okay, sure. Now, yeah. security, you know, you're paying the bills, you've got a roof over your head, you've got a car you're driving. You, you're okay, you're kind of quote unquote comfortable. Right. You, 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 could, you have everything you need. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And most people, you think about majority of the population, they operate at level one and level two. Right, exactly, yeah. Level yeah. one and level two, right? And then you transition to what I call level three, which is success. Okay. Now you don't just have everything you need, you have everything you want. Right. You're yeah. not just driving a car, you're driving the car that you right. want. Right. You're not living in how you're living the house that you want. Yeah. You could travel first class in the economy, right? Success. Right. The problem is what I notice, including myself, a lot of entrepreneurs they are stuck at the success level right. for too long. Okay. Sometimes forever. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you talk to someone and they I have a friend of mine, won't name name name, but very successful guy. Got a few kids. Relationship with the wife, not good. Relationship right. with their kids, not good. All he could talk about is the next location is going to open. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's all he could talk about. Yeah. Not happy at all. Right. Not happy guy. He's stuck in success. Right. Because success, you're still very much focused on yourself. Right. Right. Exactly. What am I going to get? What do I need to buy? What do I need to own? Right. right, it's all about me, 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 me. Then, small percentage of us we transition from success to significance. Okay, yeah. Now, when it comes to significance, it's no longer about just you. This is not cliche. This is really so. What's my legacy? Right. What 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 am I doing to impact the world? Exactly. Now yeah. it's no longer about you. So you think about going from survival to security, from security to success, success to significance. This process then you got to think about where you are in life and you will, you will have different priorities. Right. But if you have significance that you're aiming for, you automatically get everything else. Right, exactly. Yeah. When, when you are significant, you automatically get success. You right. automatically get comfort. And of course, you're beyond than survival because you don't have that scarcity mindset. So we go through this journey. Yeah. We do go through this journey, but which is a very small percentage of the population ever achieve that, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah they're not even aware of these these no. levels. No, they're, they're st- when you're when you're in most, that mode, most, you can't think most higher. Most people watching this, they're yeah. thinking security. And exactly. Success. I want to get to that success level, but when you get to success level, like John, you transition to okay, I want to, I want to do something else. I want to be able to utilize my gifts, and we right. all have gifts, to the highest degree. And what's the best way to do that? Right to me is teaching as a, as an educator. Uh, to someone maybe is to invent something. 
right? right? To people is to build something or whatever that might be. But then when you get to this stage, life is pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Life is pretty good because you're happy, you are fulfilled, you're doing what you love, you don't get exhausted, you, you're not trying to do something to get away from something. Right. You're not trying to make enough money so I can get away from it. You're not trying to, because most people, that's what most people do. Exactly, yeah. Make this you know, bucket of money, then I would do something else. Can't wait to get out of here. You hear this? Uh, I cannot wait to get yeah. out of this job. I cannot wait to get out of this business. That's not a very good way to live. Yeah. And you're also not worried about losing anything because you know if you lost it all, you could rebuild it because it's, you've, you're, you've now changed the focus from what you can get to what you've become. Yes. And once you've become something, you know that I can, it you doesn't know, matter. I'm and, secure and, in what and I am. You are, and the beautiful thing is you're not attached. Yes, yes. Because you have entrepreneurs where they're, they're so attached to the business. Exactly. Or they're so attached to their net worth. Yeah. That if they suddenly they have a, a, a dip in the investment or whatever, right? They're like, oh, like suddenly they feel their self work. It's right. Their self worth is. Am, am I not good anymore? Have I have I lost my my mojo? All right. Have I what's going on? Versus you know what. Business has cycle. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going through this. So my business, my bank account doesn't define who I am. Right. It's just a bank account, right? But when you're not attached, exactly, you have more success. It's it's funny how this works. Exactly. When you're not attached, when when you're not needy of money, people want to give you more money. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly, exactly how. When you really need money, no one gives you no. shit. <laughs> right. When I when I have no money, no one gives me shit. Right. It's seriously. Yeah. Right now now okay. when you're successful. Everybody wants to buy you lunch. Everybody exactly. wants to buy you dinner. <laughs> they send you free stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, where are these people when I had no money? <laughs> How come nobody sends me free shit back then? I exactly. need some free stuff. No, I don't need anything. Everybody sends you free stuff, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, it's, even as an influencer. Oh, for sure. You get yeah. stuff all the time. I, I get know, stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. Right? It's, like, it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny how it works, right? Yeah, because you could email, you're like, oh, I really like your product. I would love to make a YouTube video about it, uh, you know, when you're starting out. And they're like, uh, you know, whatever, no, get yeah. out of here. And then they're like, oh, please take my thing. We're going to send it to you. Just give me your address. Yeah, I will send like, some stuff yeah, to you, right? Exactly. It's exactly like that. But it's how, yeah. that's how life works. Yeah. We are not attached. We are not needy. Uh, more abundance comes exactly. to your life. Yes. Well, Dan, this is awesome. I, I mean, thanks for sharing your story. And, and I hope that you guys recognize like just the similarities between yes. our, like, you know, because sometimes I say this stuff to you guys and, and you're like, yeah, just John, John is full of shit. He's kind of crazy. But I mean, when you hear, you know, and that was the thing that actually drew me to Dan was when I heard some of his stories and I was like, oh, he thinks like, like we, we have that similar mindset because we've been through a lot of the, the same things. So, yeah. you know, you, you're hearing it, uh, you know, hopefully this reinforces it. And, you know, and one, one important thing I want to point out and then I want to, I want to tell you something that you're going to, you're going to want to hear here, which is, is recognize in, in Dan's story where the change occurred. It occurred when the mentor came in place, when he started investing in his, himself in his education, right? Because he had the 13 failed businesses. And then, you know, as I'm listening to the story, I'm thinking, okay, look, he, he mentions his first mentor and then all of a sudden... Second mentor. Yeah. It's, it's a big change. It's so, big change. so guys, uh, you know, if you like this, if you like Dan's story, we've got a lot more for you uh, and, and great. I mean, we just talked about Dan's story where there's going to be some more videos coming out. But we haven't really talked about the strategies, right? And Dan has a ton of strategies yeah. on, on how to build wealth, how to, how to build uh, the kind of life that, that you want to, how to get to that fourth mm -hmm. level that he talked about. So we're putting on a free masterclass, totally free. Uh, come check it out. It's going to be in the description, the first link in the description, also in the cards. And, uh, and make sure that you, you check out the, the following videos that we're going to have. You know, I'm going to do a couple of videos with Dan here. But, but you want to sign up for that master class. That's, uh, that's something that you're not going to win. You're not going to want to miss. So, all right, guys. Thanks a lot, Dan. Thank you. It's been awesome. Thank you, John. Yeah. Cut. Nice. Very good first start. All right. Good job. Good job. Yeah, right now.